Hi, I'm Chris Caston. I'm here with Mark Coots. And uh, Mark, a lot of growers lately are recognizing the the importance of adding P and K in a liquid form into their programs. How does the liquid and dry compare? Okay, that's a good question because, you know, I've been in the business since 1979 and <clears throat> you're definitely seeing more people looking at using starter fertilizers and things like that uh, versus the dry fertilizer. So, um, you know, there are definite differences in the availability of it and stuff. So if you can, I'll just go to the board here and I'll just show you a little example about, you know, the difference of uh, when you use dry fertilizer versus liquid, you know. So let's say if we're going to use uh, murate of potash, which is 0060, okay, that's what, that's the number two fertilizer sold in the U.S. is murate of potash. So the chemical symbol for that is KCL. So, but in that, so if a, if a farmer puts on 100 pounds of murate of potash, that means he, it's 60% potash. So that means he's getting 60 pounds of potash per acre, okay? So if he puts that 100 pounds on, he's got 60. But most universities will tell you, since this is broadcast spread, that only about 20 to 25% is available. So 25% times 60 gives you 15 pounds of K that that plant is going to use in that growing season according to most universities if you only spread 100 pounds of murate of potash out there. Well for instance if you're using a liquid product and I'll just give you one uh, uh, 31818 okay that's just one analysis of the, that we use. In that you're going to have 2.1 pounds of K per gallon. So if we're going to try to grow 200 bushel corn, which would be a kind of equivalent to putting 100 pounds of potash on, we're going to use 10 gallons of 318.18 per acre in that growing season. So if you do 10 gallons times 2.1, you'll see that you ended up with 21 pounds of K per acre. And so you're actually ending up with about six more pounds of actual K in the in to the plant to use for that year than you will versus the 100 pounds of dry just because of the availability and things like that. Now, you will not build your soil with this, so I'll never tell guys, hey, you're going to build up, you know, potash levels extremely high because you use a liquid program and things like that. But what we're trying to do here at Teva is look at feeding the plant, not necessarily the dirt. We want to take care of the dirt, obviously, but, you know, we're about feeding the plant more than we are you know, the other way around because of the availability. And the, the thing about this is this is in the form that the plant wants. This is potassium hydroxide. That's exactly how, what the plant wants to take up at the time. So you can see your efficiency is just so much higher if you're using, you know, this is the dry versus the liquid down here. Your efficiency is going to be so much higher, you know, with the liquid than you are with the dry. Okay, it sounds like you're eliminating a lot of the unknowns by using the liquid. Now, uh, that was potash. What about the phosphate portion of your fertility? Okay, the phosphate is, is very similar, you know, especially when you go to talking about liquid and stuff like that. Um, you know, you want to look at the, the different forms out there. And you have orthophosphate and you have polyphosphate, okay? Those are the two forms that you have. This is normally a green in color, so you know you can kind of tell if you're getting poly because if your liquid comes to you and it's got a green tint to it, it's going to be partially polyphosphate. Ortho is what the plant takes up. This is the form the plant takes up. So in a 31818, you know you're getting 100% um, orthophosphate. That's all orthophosphate. So it's all 100% available to the plant. And remember, a lot of companies will want to tell you that this poly is there because of slow release and things like that. Okay, well, when you what poly versus ortho is, is basically you've got a phosphate and one water. That's ortho. And over here, poly is a phosphate, and it's got two waters. Okay, so these two, you can heat po uh, polyphosphate up and turn it into ortho, or you can add water to ortho and turn it into poly, and you can do those back and forth in the soil or whatever, as long as it's just phosphate alone. But once it's introduced with nitrogen potash, then this poly is much harder to break down, so it gets to where that percent of whatever your liquid product is, this poly gets harder and harder for the plant to get to. So it is slow release because it's, it's normally so slow the plant's never going to get to it. So that's why we prefer the orthophosphate. 
But let's just say this. Remember, phosphate, you know, your P is the slowest. I mean, it moves the least in the soil. It's the least mobile of all the, of all the nutrients. Why do you need slow release if it's not mobile? Because what we're trying to do, if you've got your V opening and you're placing your seed right here, we're either putting it two by two, we're putting it right underneath the seed or right on the seed, whatever. This is only going to move maybe a centimeter a year. So why do you need it to be slow release to begin with when you're putting it right where it needs to be? And this is what the whole key is. Because your dry, pho your dry phosphate is orthophosphate, the kind the plant needs. But if you're out here on, on ground and you're spreading you know, dry all over, remember it's only moving about a centimeter or inch a year you know, somewhere. So if a root doesn't intersect it, it's not going to get that phosphate. So it's efficiency. It's all about the efficiency. It's not that we're using a different form than the dry because the ortho, they're both ortho. It's all about the placement of the product to where it's doing it. So are we saying never use dry? We're not saying that. Well, you know, there's places for it, but what we're trying to do is make sure that this plant can get its P and K that it needs to grow its crop right there without looking for it. And that's the efficiency difference of, you know, using a dry product versus a liquid of what we've seen over the 30 or 35 years that we've been in the business. And I think you're seeing more and more people trend to that. You know, I, I have, you know, the last five or six years, uh, you're seeing more and more farmers go to the, you know, the starter in the row, either two by two and things like that. So there's a lots of products out there, guys, you know, lots of different ones, you know, uh, like a good example, this 1034O is a polyphosphate. So, you know, that's, that's why it's green, you know, so, you know, you really need to study on what you're getting for, you know, they like using poly in the product because it's cheaper. So they can sell it to you cheaper, but just remember, it's like getting a gallon of, of, of gasoline or a gallon of rocket fuel. You know, I'd rather have something that's going to give me more energy, more bang for my buck. So that's, that's the biggest differences on, you know, on, on those two products. So. Okay, thanks, Mark. Yep.